Hello my friends! For today's video, I review the StreamX X1 Pro. The streaming service provided is what will mostly be the determining factor for deciding to purchase this unit. It's designed to deliver thousands of live TV channels, TV series, and video on demand movies. So up next, we take a look at what's what in this StreamX X1 Pro, its price, and where it's available to purchase. Let's start by unpacking. Once purchased, you get the standard set. TV box contents in these include the box itself, one HDMI cable, you get a Bluetooth voice remote, a 5V 2A DC power adapter, and a user manual. The box itself has a plastic shell with the StreamX branding on a glossy surface to the top. At the back for connecting ports, it has one HDMI 2.0 port, a gigabit LAN port, one optical audio, one AV port, an IR extender port, its DC input socket, and a pair of external antennas. On the side, it has one USB 3.0, one USB 2.0, a micro SD card reader, and a reset button. To the front, it has an LED display, and to its base has four anti-skid rubber feet with ventilation holes. So its first boot up process includes a StreamX animation, followed by the disclaimer about contents and personal usage of this box. Then you have a first startup wizard to adjust your screen. So at the top of the screen, we have our Bluetooth status, we have our weather widget, and we have the date and time. In the far left of the screen are some icons, and the first one is the gear wheel, which is our settings menu. This will take us directly to our Android TV settings, where we can access our network settings. We need to put in our password for our network, so simply select your network and it will prompt you for a password. While we're here, let's take a look at device preferences. If we scroll down to the bottom, you can see that we're using the StreamX X1 Pro and we've got 64GB of flash memory and 4GB of RAM. We've also got a version number and we are on Android TV OS version 12. Below the gear wheel icon, we've got the folder icon. And from here, we can access all of our media on the device through local memory, a network neighborhood, or NShare. Next one down is the brush icon. And here you can clean the system memory if you want some performance improvement and issues like lagging or stuttering in media playback. Next, you can also check the speed of your internet connection by clicking on the speedometer icon. This will bring up an online internet speed test. The next icon down is the bin icon, and here we can uninstall any apps that we've installed. Next is the microphone icon, and this is your voice commands, which you can use with your remote. First of all, you need to set it up. Just follow the on-screen instructions. And lastly, we've got the function icon. This allows you to assign app shortcuts to the keypad numbers on your remote. It's a fairly straightforward process. Once this is done, all you have to do is press the corresponding number keypad to open the app you assigned to it. Now, back on the home screen, we've also got 9 shortcut links. We can populate these with our favorite apps, and it's pretty easy to do. Just click on any empty link and it'll bring up your latest apps, and you can choose the ones you want to populate on the home screen. Above those favorites, we've got our browser. This is adequate. You can browse the internet at your leisure, and you can use the mouse function on your remote to navigate the pages. As you can see, navigation is smooth, quick, and effortless. Back again, we've got another app shortcut. And you guessed it, this will take you to all your installed apps. So of course, you have access to the Google Play Store, and all you need to do is sign in and you're good to go. Next to that, on the home screen, we have an App Store shortcut that will take us to our App Store. And in this case, we have the Play Store. The price point of this TV box is $279, and that's after a $50 coupon, which I placed in the description below the video. One often wonders why these boxes are so expensive, and yet they're not high-end hardware models. Now, one of the main reasons why you're probably buying this box is for live TV, and we access it by simply clicking on the icon. So, this is the standard layout. And at the top, we have a list of channels, and in this case, it's $14.94. And below that, we can scroll through the channel list and click on the one we want to select. And you get a preview of the channel in a square box on the right. As you can see, there's a lot of selection here. And as an example, I'm going to choose this channel, and you can see it pop into full screen view. And we get some information at the bottom about the time and length of the program, as well as when it started and when it finishes. Along the bottom, we've got some menu options. We've got settings, and from here, we can turn on the status bar which shows the date and time and your Wi-Fi status. On screen, you've also got internet speed, 
which shows your connection speed. We can change the viewing aspect ratio, decode resources, and you can give feedback. Going back, we can also search for a particular channel. Just type in the title of the channel and you're good to go. Now, if you press OK on your remote, a small submenu of channels will appear and you can navigate through channels while watching the current channel. Pressing left on the D-pad will bring up more categories and from there you can access your favorites. And below that, you have access to all the different categories. We have network TV, regional networks, 24-7 pay-per-view events, a variety of sports categories, and in some instances, each sport has its own category, which is pretty cool. We also have music and Canada, Latino, super sports, so overall a great selection. Back on the home screen, let's look at the video on demand option. Here we have categories along the top, recommended movies and TV shows. If we scroll down, we can see options like search, favorites, history, and settings. Search, of course, is just like it sounds. It's basically searching for content, a keypad to help you find what you're looking for. You can also use optional filters along the bottom. Favorites are here, and these are your favorite movies and TV shows. I like the way it's split into two categories. Next, along the bottom, is history, which shows you what you watched. This is great if you couldn't finish what you were watching earlier. You can go back to it. Next to history, we have settings and upgrades. Back up to the top, the next category is newest, which is the latest TV shows and movies that have been added. Next to that, along the top, we have movies, and we can explore all the movies by clicking on the movies icon. We can see the total number of movies and the number of pages, which is quite a lot. To the left, we have our search and filter functions, and all of our categories. In terms of genres, we have new releases, action, adventure, animation, biography, comedy, crime, documentary, drama, Family, fantasy, film noir, history, horror, music, musical, mystery, romance, sci-fi, short, sport, thriller, war, western, and news. As you can see, they are planning to keep you occupied. Now, back up top, let's take a quick look at the search and filter function. This is all quite self-explanatory. Just type in what you're looking for and it should come up straight away. Now, the cool feature here is the filter option. This allows you to filter movies by type, genre, country, and year. It's definitely going to help you narrow down the one that you're looking for. Moving on to TV series, and it's much the same. All the same features, great search, and filter combos. Pretty good selection. I'd like to talk about the playback feature on the home screen. This feature allows you to watch movies and TV shows you might have missed. You can choose from a list of channels on the left and the dates when the content was aired on the right. You can also see the time and titles of the programs. All you have to do is select the date, time, and program you want to watch and it will start playing. And in my opinion, this is a very handy feature. There are around 100 channels with this option, and I'm sure there'll be more in the future. Overall, I think this box has all the features you need. Great content, a wide variety of categories, and plenty of settings to customize. The great thing about this box is its simple plug-and-play setup, so you don't need any tech knowledge to set it up and get it running. The Stream X X1 Pro definitely earns the seal of approval, so if you found this video helpful, Please give us a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated. See you soon.